you think the Phillies can compete, or do they still have too many holes in the lineup? Uh, they sure look like an 81-81 and 81 team. But here's what we don't know. Um, I was looking at this the other day. There are hundreds of unsigned free agents in Major League Baseball, including some real top talent. Um, once the owners started the lockout, all transactions ended. And so if you can tell me who's going to be playing second base, third base for the Phillies this year, uh, who's going to be in the outfield, who's going to fill out the rotation, I'll have a better sense of what they are going to be. But right now, given the roster they have, you know, Harper, Zach Wheeler, Nola, a couple other guys, top talent, Real Muto, um, they don't have enough, I think, sir, I, I think, to compete in the East with the likes of Atlanta, who is, a, as we know, a very solid team. Yeah, a lot of holes to fill, as you said. Uh, hopefully Alec Bohm will come back and play third base and actually be good. And then they got to find a left fielder and a center fielder, figure out the right. bullpen. They're going to have a crazy week or two of, you know, everybody trying to find a, a new team, all those free agents that you mentioned. Yeah, and that, that, may, be, that may be a lot of fun. And yeah. if the Phillies are in the middle of all that, That'll be great. Um, and by the way, if Bum comes back and plays third base, they're in big trouble. He's got to be <laughs> your first baseman or your DH because he is, to quote my friend Ray Dinger, he is the corner butcher out there. <laughs> yeah. I love that. One of, one of Ray's famous quotes. I love it. Yeah. Hey, let's turn our attention to a team that is doing pretty well and has gotten the city of Philadelphia and their fans pretty excited. That, of course, those Philadelphia 76ers, the new look Sixers. We can still question their depth, of course, but I'm guessing you're pretty happy with what you've seen from this team since James Harden started playing. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, they're good for 120 points a night. Um, the chemistry that Harden and Embiid developed immediately – and the improvement that it allows Tyrese Maxey to have makes them a team that you really can have realistic hopes is going to go deep into the playoffs and maybe even to the championship, maybe even to the finals. Tyrese Maxey has very quickly become one of my favorite Sixers, oh, like Amy, Amy Fadul's favorite as well. Uh, love his enthusiasm, love his fearlessness. Pretty much the opposite of that guy that we sent up to Brooklyn uh, you know, a few weeks back. Yeah, and, and listen, but just Maxi himself is such an exciting, fast, rapidly developing young player. He was a steal at the 21st pick. You mentioned my friend Amy Fadul. I think she mostly loves him because of the Kentucky connection. But the trade for Harden allowed him to come off the ball, use his speed, and the passes that Harden gets to him. Uh, Al Abdel Nabi had a great quote, uh, I think, in second or third game that Harden played here, which was he doesn't just pass you the ball well, he puts it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And he does. He sets up guys so well to shoot and finds them in the clear that it's it's helping everybody. Hey, Glenn, I'm still not sure what to make of the 2021 Eagles. They won nine games. They made the playoffs. But as you know, the nine wins came against non-playoff teams. We still have that memory of what happened against Tampa Bay in the actual playoff game. Uh, so how good was this Eagle season, and how far they are they away from being a legitimate contender, do you think? Yeah, I'm more optimistic, I guess, than a lot of people. They have a great offensive line. They have a terrific running game. Um, I like Smith, the rookie. I like Dallas Goddard as a tight end. Jalen Hurts has a lot to prove, but I, I believe he's got an upside. I don't know that he's ever going to be a perennial pro bowler, but I think he may be good enough. And I think in the NFC – I was thinking about this earlier today. In the NFC, especially now with Russell Wilson traded over to yeah. Denver and Tom Brady retiring, there aren't a lot of good quarterbacks. It's not like the AFC where there's, you know, Mahomes and Allen and, and so many of them. Mm -hmm. If the Eagles are able to hit this offseason on free agency, like to bring in a wide receiver, uh, and on, on in the draft, particularly on defense, we know that they need help at every level on defense. If they can hit, uh, I think they can win the division. I don't think they're a Super Bowl championship team, but I think they're a team that can, well, they play 17, can win 11 games, maybe 12 if they stay healthy next year. I see more of an upside. I see some young talent with this team. All right, yeah, we got to hope Jalen Hurts does continue to develop. That would go a long way to winning 11 games. Glenn, I'm not going to ask you to recreate your two-minute rant from last Saturday, but, <laughs> man, you, you really had a – 
a lot to say about the dead rot flyers, as you put it. What yeah. the hell has happened to this franchise, which, as you pointed out, has become pretty much irrelevant now? Yeah, and it's such a shame because when I moved to Philadelphia in the mid '80s, the Flyers were, you know, they they were at that point were maybe a decade removed from the Cup, but they were always good and they were always tough and they had a work ethic and they developed players and they played smart and they played hard. So look at that crowd midway through the first period last Thursday. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I when I saw that, I first thought maybe that was before the game, but as you see, I mean that's <laughs> it, that's in the middle of the first period. It yeah. was it, it's terrible what has happened to them. On the ice, they have lost their way. Um, their farm system is just terrible. You know, they've been through two coaches this year, and and Yao, who's the coach now, basically said the other day that he he's not able to motivate these guys. They have a young goalie who hopefully doesn't get run over by all this and develop bad habits. He's had a good bounce back year. They're going to trade Claude Giroux, but I don't think they're going to get much for him. Uh, it is a franchise that once meant so, so much. It was an elite franchise of the league, not just on the ice, but in terms of its reputation, you know, it's national, it's being a national attraction. And now they're just the East coast version of the Columbus blue jackets. It is so, so sad to see they're not a major league team anymore. They're not They're You know, the, the Sixers, the Eagles, even the Phillies are professional level teams and the Flyers are not. They have fallen so low. It's going to take so long and they've alienated the fan base, the alumni, so many people in this town. Yeah, it's I don't know sad. if that rant was like last week's, but <laughs> it's how I feel about him. Now, that picture that I just uh, put up inadvertently was this one. Yeah. You and your dad, and I guess they're your sons, right? Yeah, those are my two sons, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how is your dad doing, especially, you know, following another Buffalo Bills playoff exit? <laughs> yeah, well, I watched that game with my dad. Um, my dad's 91 years old, mm -hmm. and he's great. And every once in a while, I'll bring him on the show, and I think he – I know he enjoys it, and I think people enjoy him. And that Buffalo Bills loss was the ultimate heartbreaker. But when I talked to my dad the next morning, he said – We'll get him next year. And I think the reason my dad lives to be 91 and his good health is because he has that attitude. He he loves it. He's passionate about it, but he gets over it fast, and he's always looking to next year. And so he always has next year. Yeah, nice. Hey, on our show last week, Glenn, um, Bill and I did something that I think you and Ray have done from time to time too, uh, especially considering the Ben Simmons mess. We discussed some of our most despised Philadelphia athletes from the past 30 years or so. Uh, these were some of the guys that you know, yeah. we've mentioned here and there. I wanted to ask you, uh, who are the top two or three guys that you most despised while under contract to a Philadelphia team? Wow. Well, I like that you have Namdi up there, uh, as I can see, because Namdi's right at the top of the list. This is a guy who was brought in with such expectations yeah. and a huge contract. And what we learned about him is he was not a guy who knew how to play on a winning team, and he was not a guy who particularly cared that much. So that, that would be one of them. Is Andrew Bynum in there? I oh, yeah. See. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yep. there you go. Andrew Bynum is one, stole money. I would put him in there. One that you don't have there, I would disagree with T.O. I know he left under bad circumstances, but boy, he was great. Yeah. The Eagle who I despised, I think the most, both as a player on a personal level, was Jason Babin, uh, <laughs> pass rushing defensive end who only cared about his own personal sacks, didn't care about the team, didn't care about his teammates, didn't care to give any effort on a run play. Um, Jason Babin would be right at the top of my list. So yeah. I, I, I think I'll go with those guys. Brizgalov, I think you had him up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He quit on the team. So Bynum, Babin, Brizgalov, a lot of Bs. <laughs> Plus, he was a goofball, Brizgalov. <laughs> he was. And it was fun when he was. Yeah. When he was kind of with you and when he was winning, and I didn't even winning, when he cared, it was kind of fun. And then when he went south, it just got really, really awful. Yeah. Well, Glenn, this was awesome. Always great to have you on with us. Folks, follow this guy on Twitter, at Real Glenn Mac now. Glenn, thanks for doing this. Hey, uh, Chad, it's always my pleasure. Anytime you ask, I'll be there.